Teenager Chessy Prout found herself at the center of a firestorm when the trial of the classmate who sexually assaulted her grabbed national attention back in 2015. Well, now she is spearheading a movement. We're going to talk to her in a moment. But first, Chessy was 15 and a freshman at the elite boarding school, St. Paul School in New Hampshire, when her whole world changed. Chessie Prout was a legacy. Her dad went to St. Paul's, her sister was a senior, and she was excited to follow in their footsteps. Then in the spring of her freshman year of high school, she accepted an invitation from an 18-year-old senior named Owen Labrie. He took her to a secluded room on campus and sexually assaulted her. She went to the police. Labrie was charged with sexual assault and went to trial. With the world watching in three days of emotional testimony, Chessie bravely told her story in court, her face obscured. I was raped. I was violated in so many ways. In 2015, Labrie was convicted of misdemeanor sex assault and child endangerment, as well as using a computer to lure the victim for sex. He was acquitted of rape. Jesse later went public for the first time in an exclusive interview with Savannah. Although it was scary and although it was pretty, pretty difficult, I mean, I couldn't have... I wouldn't be where I am today without having been able to speak up for myself during that time. Labrie was denied a new trial by the judge and is currently appealing to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Meanwhile, the 162-year-old boarding school recently settled the civil suit brought by Chessie's parents. The terms of that settlement are sealed. Chessie Proud has written a new memoir about her ordeal and her activism. It's called... I have the right to a high school survivor's story of sexual assault, justice, and hope. Chessie, hi. Hi, Hoda. You've done a lot of brave things. Thank you, you testified in court and faced your accuser. You went on national television and revealed who you are. And now you've written it in a book. And I love the title of your book, I Have the Right To. Why that title? What does that mean to you? Well, the whole I Have the Right To yeah. social media campaign um, actually came about by my little sister mm -hmm. who recommended, she actually said, when is there going to be women's rights? When is it going to be time for girls' rights? And so when I came onto the Today Show for the first time to shed my anonymity, um, I didn't want to come empty-handed. And mm -hmm. I wanted to bring something solid, as solid as a 17-year-old can bring, mm -hmm. um, to help people, help inspire people. And so I brought the hashtag I have the right to movement, and I wanted to help other young people claim their rights. A lot of young girls or young women may have thought to themselves, I testified in court, I did enough. I don't want to dredge it all up. Writing a book is difficult. It's hard to relive all those things. Was there a part of you that said, you know what, why don't I just put all that on the shelf and go on with my life this way? Well, you know what? I wasn't given the luxury of staying quiet. My name was blasted on the Internet. Um, there were hate sites written about me. So I decided to kind of reclaim my name. I wanted to reclaim my name, reclaim my story, because... It is difficult for a survivor to come forward like this. And I had a supportive family and a supportive mm -hmm. community to return home to, which not a lot of survivors have. You say a lot of profound things in the book, I should say. But one of the lines that you say that I, I found very profound, you said, rape is not a punishment for poor judgment. Although your assailant wasn't convicted on the rape charge, this statement, rape is not a punishment for, for, for poor judgment, probably speaks to a lot of young girls who think, well, why did I go there and meet him? Or why did I have that many drinks? What are you trying to let young women know? Well, I just want to emphasize that, again, there is no such thing as a perfect victim. People can be able to pull us apart, tear us apart, tear us down, try to poke holes in our stories, but at the same time, we are human. Mm. We make mistakes, and we're not perfect. And so that's what I wanted to show through writing this book, is show my vulnerabilities, show my weaknesses, and be able to say, you can be strong through those. Mm -hmm. Now, um, your family did reach a settlement with the school, and the school did release this statement, which I'm going to read really quickly. We fully support Jesse's trailblazing work to give a voice to sexual assault victims. The school's culture does not condone or tolerate what happened to Jesse. We teach students extensively about sexual assault prevention, and we have strengthened our robust programs on health, well-being, and mutual respect. Your family has settled that, uh, that suit. What do you hope is accomplished by that? Well, 
I, like I said in my statement, I mean, it's, it shouldn't be on a now 19-year-old's shoulders to take on a 162-year-old institution, a sort of old boys network. And so I'm grateful for the Attorney General of New Hampshire for continuing his investigation into the misconduct of St. Paul's School, because there's a lot to be told there. Mm -hmm. How are you, I mean, when you're not thinking about the book and when you're not thinking about what happened, when you're by yourself and you're quiet, and it's been a few years now, but I know it's still there. Like, when you don't have anyone around, what are you, what are you feeling like? How are your thoughts then? I take a lot of in introspective looks into my life. And writing this book, I, was, I ha had to take a lot of introspective um, views into my life, my past, and growing up in Japan and the earthquake. And I think to myself how grateful I am for my health to be alive and healthy and well, to have a family, um, to have a beautiful new puppy at home that mm -hmm. keeps me company most of the time. <laughs> um, but grateful for the good things because it's not important to focus on the bad when you're alone. <laughs> well, you have a very positive attitude and your book is called I Have the Right To and I think a lot of people will get a lot out of it. Jesse, thank you for joining us today. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Hoda. All right, the book I Have the Right To comes out tomorrow and you can find so much more about it on today.com slash shop. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.